Alrighty, welcome back to the Son of a Boy Dad podcast. Today it is March 20th, it is 12.17pm, and we are live from HQ3. And we're asking the important questions, what about loving? What about respectful? Exactly. What about eight inches in thick? (laughs) Uh, Francis should be joining us any minute, so don't leave now. (laughs) We got a lot to unpack today. We have a lot of shit to talk about today, including um, sexism and misogyny is back. Exactly. Today we are going to be highlighting some difficult topics. When will the war in the Middle East stop? And the triumphant return of sexism and misogyny. (laughs) When will misogyny come to an end once and for all? No, it's not. uh, Misogyny is back. It's back in a strong way. Goldman Sachs refuses to hire any women now. Really? Yeah. Who's what's that? Goldman Sachs, I think, is a bank. Ah. Uh, a very successful bank. And all the other top banks have female CEOs and CFOs, and Goldman Sachs is like misogyny is back. Fuck yeah. And now is that because of like sacks, like ball sacks? Yes. Yeah. Gold man sacks. Oh, I see. <laughs> Three masculine ass words. Yeah. So just a bunch of jews with big balls <laughs> <laughs> the big bald jews are back on top exactly well we, we and that's really, why the war in the middle east will not end they were never really not on top but <laughs> yeah that's true except for one brief period except from 1941 br- <laughs> to 1945 <laughs> except for the war <laughs> yeah it's uh fucking tough but someone has to be on top someone has to lead the the case of misogyny of course you watch any good youtube debates recently now been on a lot, been on a big movie kick, a lot of uh, Vegas heists. You mean the Ocean's movies? The Ocean's <laughs> movies, and then Casino. Oh yeah, Casino's good. Casino is amazing. Was that really a heist? No. Yeah. It's pretty much just Goodfellas, but in Vegas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What if Goodfellas? Pretty much the exact same movie as wasn't Goodfellas. in Jersey. <laughs> yeah. But it was in Vegas. Like, and it's a combination of Goodfellas and Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. It's, but Wolf of Wall Street came after, so it's like Wolf of Wall Street was basically like, what if we took the... When was Goodfellas? 90? Spot on, 90. And Casino was 95? Was it? Yeah. Probably, yeah. I mean, they're both really. Scorsese, and it's the exact same cast. Like, the side characters are the same side characters in Goodfellas. The garden variety Italians are the same yeah. Italians. I mean, they they it was just Goodfellas was so good. I mean, it makes sense to do. Yeah, like it's a Goodfellas great movie. was so good, they were like, "Let's just remake." And it. And you're not gonna, you can't make Goodfellas too. No, it's better that they made it with a different name. But it's like the exact, like they, like they're on top. They all get really into coke, and then it crumbles. It's like the exact same movie, right? Just the uh, white guys being white guys. Yeah. Mis- I mean, it was basically what Goldman Sachs is trying to take us back to. Exactly the that age crazy of girl. casino, yeah, and crazy girls, and then crazy girls get in the way. And that was kind of the warning that Goldman Sachs took. They're exactly. like, get these fucking crazy broads out of here. Exactly. These paranoid ass crazy broads. They're all addicted to drugs anyway. Yeah, it's just, it disgusts me. Mm-hmm. The death and everything like that. Yeah. Fucking uh, Joe Pesci's crazy. Joe Pesci's nuts. Robert De Niro was great. Yeah, he's great too. He was the normal guy though. What happened to, uh, can we not make gangster movies anymore because we don't have a good stable of Italians? The fact Whoa. that Pesci... De Niro, Pacino, Leota were all like bubbling up at the same time. Yeah, that but they're all God. Joe Pesci's like a hundred. Liotta's dead, and Robert De Niro's what? Robert De Niro is still not that old. I mean, he's old as shit, he's like but he doesn't look plus, as old. But he's having a new kid. Yeah, yeah. He <laughs> yeah. He's still yeah. He's still youthful. He went to traumatize that kid yeah. before he went. Yeah. I'll just die when you're at a formative half brain age. Yeah. Don't worry about one. it. You'll be good. You'll have a nice trust fund. But I, I just don't think that they're cranking out uh, Italian actors like that. Now it's fucking Irish actors, honestly. Yeah. I mean, they did The Irishman. Right. But I never watched that. But that was like they're cosplaying as Italians. I never watched it either. Because it was like four hours long. Yeah. Nobody wanted And all I saw was on Twitter, people like making fun of the shitty scenes. Of, yeah. Like them like being... 78 years old and beating the shit out of someone. Yeah. Getting hurt themselves. Ray Liotta was in a show called, I think it was called Blackbird on Apple TV. 
and he plays like this guy's like father, and that show is really fucking good. Have I you can seen tell that, that show? you're a cinephile because you say Liotta instead of Leota. Leota? I don't know which one it is, but I know that if you love I thought movies, it was Ray you say Liotta. Ray Liotta? I don't know. It's probably one of... Leota just is probably a Philly accent. <laughs> Ray Liotta. <laughs> what's, the, what's the show Blackbird about? It's about uh, this drug dealer who's like this like hot, cool, jacked guy. And he gets arrested for dealing drugs, but he's like a super like charming guy and like can kind of like influence anybody. So they're like, here's your, here's what we're going to do. We're going to send you to this super dangerous prison where there's this like mentally challenged serial killer who's refusing to admit what he did. And they're like, we want you to go in and become friends with him and get him to confess to you. Really? Does yeah. he do it? Uh, well, I'm not going to spoil the show, bro. Who cares? I... It, Dude, it's like I, I, I think it's not. Not a lot of people watch it because it's on Apple TV, and not a lot of people have oh, Apple it's TV. Really, it's, it's that good, dude. It's fucking phenomenal. Should I add it to the queue? Yes, it's only like seven episodes. Add, consider it added to it's the queue. It's really fucking good. So hour long episodes, probably like forty five minutes. So it was basically just a movie that they chopped up. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's but that's what all miniseries are. Yeah, I would have watched The Irishman if it was a series. Oh, 100%. hundred percent. But it, since it's fucking, and they could have made it a little bit longer, put a little more fluff in there. Yeah. But a four-hour movie. Yeah. Fuck that. Well, I mean, those fucking Joe Pesci and Robert De Niro probably have to work the same hours as like when they have babies on set, and it's like they get thirty minutes of, at, at, at a time. Yeah. Because they're they have so an goddamn and they're old. Them in what <laughs> yeah. To say. Yeah. Make the face, Robert De Niro. <laughs> Frown with your mouth closed, De Niro. We need a fucking poster. What they used to do was remake the same movie and just call it a different name. Yeah. Like Goodfellas to Casino. Now they just remake the same concept and make it shittier. Yeah. I saw Roadhouse last night, the remake of the movie Roadhouse. Yeah, were you at like the premiere? Yeah. Why? How did that happen? I don't know. I literally have no idea. I have a crazy celeb story from the premiere, too. Well, I mean, I saw your wife was posting, and she was with, you guys were with, like, Conor McGregor. <laughs> yeah. I totally forgot about it. I must have been, like, about to fall asleep when I watched that, because I just remembered that. What do you mean? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that we were at the premiere yeah. last night? Yeah, it was like... Why were you... Were, did you have to wear, like, a tux? No, but, I mean, we, we had, to, you had to dress, uh, I think, a cocktail chic. <laughs> so what did you wear? <laughs> a cocktail dress. A cocktail dress? <laughs> High nice. heels. Not bad. Something cute. The boys were going crazy. For was it, it bad? Too. People said that movie was going to be terrible. I don't think you can People say it's right. bad if you went to the premiere, though. <laughs> that you can't be at the premiere being like, "Man, this movie's dog shit." <laughs> everybody was going. Cra everybody was loving it. Like the crowd was going crazy. Like uh, I've never been in a movie theater where like somebody gets punched and everyone's like, "Yeah!" Yeah. And they were doing that. I guess how that's how it's like at a, like a pre like a premiere of like a Marvel movie. Or like when people go the opening night of Guardians yeah, of the yeah. Galaxy or Black or Panther, Black Panther, and the whole crowd's like clapping and crying and shit like that. But that's what they were doing for this movie. Where oh, was it? The uh, premiere. Yeah. At, or you know what to say. It was at an undisclosed location. Yeah. No, it was at uh, like the fucking like 60th and Broadway, whatever the fuck is up there. Radio City. No, it was on the west side. Damn, I didn't know Gyllenhaal had that in his bag. So that's here's my story. <laughs> you met Gyllenhaal? I went to the fucking bathroom midway through the movie because they get they tell you like get there at like five thirty or some yeah. shit. Like fucking, they're like walk the red carpet, and I was like, I got there later than that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not walking the red carpet. Um, they and Robbie Fox is doing interviews on the red carpet. He really? got McGregor and he got Gyllenhaal. Dude. I saw that. I saw him get McGregor. Um, but he knows McGregor. Yeah, and McGregor knows him. Yeah, even, they're even close more personal so like, hey, Robbie. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking sick. I go to the bathroom in the middle of the movie because they tell you to get there at 5.30, and then they're like, the movie will start at 7.30 promptly. It'll be two hours and one minute. They're so specific with the times. We're sitting in the seats till like 8.15. The shit doesn't start. Yeah. And all they have is popcorn and smart waters, and I'm just pounding smart waters. So like an hour, 15 minutes, I fucking go into the bathroom of the fucking... Uh, of the movie theater. Yeah. To pee. And Gyllenhaal's in there, banging lines. <laughs> um, all right. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm at the fucking... I go to the bathroom. I fucking go to... I, I pee at the urinal. I go to wash my hands. Yeah. And I fucking... I'm looking in the mirror. 
Jalen Hall walks in yeah. to the bathroom. Yeah. Goes to the fucking uh urinal. Yeah. Opens up like like a notebook, like uh like a address book type yeah. of thing, like a calendar, like a small calendar. Dump sack. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't yeah. even line it up. Yeah, just oh. yeah, yeah. A fucking full toot, and he doesn't know I'm looking. But then he like turns around and walks, and I'm like drying my hands at the kiosk or, or at the at the sink or whatever. And he comes up to me, or or like, and he he's making eye contact through the mirror with me, and he's like, "Tell whoever you want, no one's gonna believe you." <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! Uh, <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, dude. And That's crazy. I couldn't fucking believe it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Holy fuck. Dump sack. That's awesome. Dump sack, no line up, just wonk out of a fucking like uh, <laughs> little black book type of, <laughs> type of deal. Did you I get a picture with him? <laughs> no, I didn't want to I didn't want to get a picture cuz it was in the bathroom. Yeah, yeah. I felt bad. That's crazy. What did you say after that? You just laugh? Yeah. And then well, and then left. Uh no he left before I left he didn't wash his hands oh that's the leading story here <laughs> Jake Gyllenhaal denies COVID <laughs> <laughs> refuses to wash his hands for a full ninety seconds because I washed long just to kind of like see what he was doing oh yeah of course sure yeah. enough I got a show you're doing the ABCs I got a singing a Happy Birthday a show and a movie <laughs> who else was there Keenan or uh, Kel Kel from Keenan and Kel was there nice Fibulo says hi to yeah. the guys. Connor Wood was there. Um, How do those people get to go to every single like famous person event? Keenan and Fibula. <laughs> like I feel like all those TikTok people are just they just go to like the Grace Oscars, the Grammys. Yeah, wow, what is that? I don't know. I've never once gotten an invitation to anything like that. You got to start checking your inbox. When I went to the SNL after party, they were all there. All like, the same like people? their names are like permanently engraved on the list. Oh, uh, that makes sense. What is it? What's what's free social? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh oh. Got it. Got it. Got it. I thought it's like you meant free social employees. They're free social employees. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, they probably didn't want me telling that fucking that tale, but who's gonna believe me? Yeah, exactly. Well, he probably didn't know he was talking to one of the top 100 comedy podcasters on the on the planet. <laughs> one of 100 killers. But yeah. There's not that many of us. It's really fucking. There's only like forty thousand. <laughs> thousand. <laughs> Yeah, it's a fucking ton of us, but it was a very, it was a very interesting uh, movie experience. I had better seats at this than the fucking premiere of the movie that I was in, though. The yeah. fucking bodied movie. Yeah, you looked like you were right up front. You I were in front right. of McGregor. I was. Yeah. <laughs> I literally was. That's why it was McGregor there. Oh, he's in it. He's in the movie. He steals the show of the movie. Yeah? Yeah. He's like, you see his bare ass, like, for maybe five full minutes of the movie. Damn. You see so much of his bare ass. I don't know if there's a better fucking... So how does that go at a premiere? What do they... They play the movie and then what? Gyllenhaal comes up and talks? No, Gyllenhaal came up and talked beforehand. Oh, okay. And then like... I thought that everybody would sit and watch all the credits and be really respectful. Everybody got the fuck out uh, and and just bounce right away. Is there a party after? There was a party after. Did you go? I had like a uh, drink and a half. Drink and a half. Just Bit enough to... to run the hair. <laughs> Rub I know elbows. That well, leads I know when to, to quit. You know what I mean? I know when mean? that leads to. No, some of us know when to quit. Caterpillars with Jill and Hall. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> More like <laughs> anthills. <laughs> uh, Francis, welcome, brother. Rome was doing lines with Jill and Hall last night. No. Is that right? They weren't lines, and I wasn't doing them with him. Yeah, I don't even know if you can retell the story, but it's one of the funniest things I've ever heard. Maggie or Jake? Both. Jake, how crazy is it that I just saw Maggie fucking a uh, week and a half ago, and now I'm seeing Jake? Yeah. That's pretty good. It was fucking incredible. I love Jake Gyllenhaal. Love. You're going to well, love him even more after this story. I don't need you. I'll listen to the episode. Perfect. I don't want to make you... We can't continue the rest of the episode pretending that that didn't happen. You got to tell the story again. Well, if you want... Do you... Dude, it's funny as fuck. Because you want to keep going. Okay. You, you got to hear it. No, I just want I want your reaction because it's so funny. Okay. Give me give me. There's a good time. celebrity Sorry. story. I love A good celebrity that. interaction. I... You don't have to get just to tell this... me and we could cut it. No, that's <laughs> no, not. No, I get no. to the movie early. People I, are going to want to hear it twice. I get to the movie early. I, I get promise. to the movie at 5.30. I, it's like, it, and they're like, uh, or I, I didn't get there at 5.30. I probably got there at like six something. 
And but they said movie starts promptly at seven thirty. You have to be in your. You have to get there by like seven or something like that, or they'll release your tickets to the public. So I got there early, sat in the seats, thought everything would be prompt because they were so specific with the times. All they had was popcorn and smart water. I'm chugging the smart water. So by the time this movie starts, it's the premiere of Roadhouse last yep. night. Dylan Hall's in it, and uh, I went to the bathroom midway through the movie. I'm the only person in the bathroom. I fucking pee, go to wash my hands, and fucking Jillian Hall walks into the bathroom. And I'm fucking like long washing my hands, 90 full seconds, just watching him through the mirror, like uh, looking at him behind me. <laughs> he walks to the urinal, doesn't start peeing, pulls out a small like notebook, like a, uh, like a, cal- like a personal calendar, like little black book type of thing, dumps sack, not even, doesn't even line it up. <laughs> toots the whole thing right there and fucking turns around, sees me looking at him through the mirror, walks up next to me, doesn't wash his hands, but he goes, tell whoever you want. No one's going to believe you. (laughs) Walks out without washing his hands. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. What a story. No, no, that is incredible. <laughs> wow, what a relief that you did tell it again. <laughs> Holy shit. Didn't offer you any? No, I, I was like, uh, I didn't exist to him. <laughs> I might as well have been, he might as well have been talking to a painting. He does not strike me as the type of guy who would do something that mythical. Yeah. Maybe it's because he's got all jacked for a roadhouse and he has another role coming up where he's got to be a little skinnier. Maybe it's skinnier. I don't know. He's so, he was so lean in the movie Roadhouse that like, but I don't know. If- yeah, but he was wiry and ripped, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah like lean, like, like the most beautiful abs and stuff yeah and you saw every ounce of his like his Dude, body fat i must have saw been 2%. him in a broadway musical a sondheim musical called sundays in the park with george mm-hmm. of course it is tough to square that and broke back mountain with the masculine dynamic energy that you just described well he was also in south paul i mean in this right. movie he's like jarhead uh, Jarhead, he's like oh, this. Jarhead's so fucking so good. good. Yeah, you should have told him that. <laughs> I would have. I would have said Jarhead's way better it than just, this shit. It just shows you the range. <laughs> was Ra- was Roadhouse any good? No, he said it was terrible. Sass told me I'm not allowed to say that. Why? No, I, I said it, it's just funny to be at a premiere and everyone's like, "Damn, this movie fucking blows." That stinks. Wearing like tuxes. Uh, I wouldn't say it was. Uh, I wouldn't say it was terrible. I mean, it doesn't speak you highly can't say of the it movie. That gonna the get, this is going to get back to him for sure. I wouldn't say it was terrible. The star of the movie left in the middle of the premiere. <laughs> but I think that he's... It's like, he's seen it a hundred times. Yeah, he's seen it a hundred times. There's a... Uh, there were other... I think there was one other premiere in Austin, but this was like the global premiere or something. I thought like he that. would be miffed that you had left in the middle of the movie. Well, it's just one bathroom. guy in the bathroom. He probably did, like... You could have been at any movie. Were there other movies playing? No, I've never no. been to a premiere. No, it wasn't there. there no, I don't movies. think it was like an AMC. <laughs> I think they were in like a theater. It was like a. Th- it was like um. Oh. I don't know. It was like um, it was like 60th and Broadway or some shit like oh, that. Oh, here in New York. It was in New York. Can you? Re- How'd you get tickets to this? I don't know. He I got refuses an email. to say. I got an email. SAG for sure. I'm not no, in SAG. I'm in SAG, and I don't get what shit are you like in that. SAG? They just send me DVDs. <laughs> what, was, what was what was that the one? Film actors, the film actors guild. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's not my joke. That's Roan's joke. No, it's not. That's like a South Park joke. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, really Writers good. Guild, but uh, but Grace said she just got an email too. Damn, I should have checked my. I probably got it's the one big too. hitters. Didn't check. It's the heavy hitters. Yes, I think that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It it was it was a cool experience, but people were just whooping it up in the crowd. Like they were loving it. Mm. Robbie loved it. Grace loved the movie. Oh, Robbie was there too. Robbie. So yeah. he interviewed uh Joan Hall on the red carpet. He was on wow, red carpet. Oh, cool. And he McGregor. was dressing up yesterday. Yes, for this. He looked great. That's Excuse cool. Me. Yeah, for this. It was fantastic. Was it bad? Did you see Iron Claw? I don't think so. You I saw Wreck It Ralph. Is Iron Claw the one with Hugh Jackman where they fight robots against each other? No, Iron Claw is the Zac Efron movie about the what's it oh, called the family. Yeah, yeah, oh, I, I heard did that see was that. good. Phenomenal. 
Really? Yeah, amazing. But I was so disturbed by Efron's uh, visage, his face in that mm-hmm. movie, that I feel like I couldn't even get into it. Efron murdered in that movie? Did he? Yeah. He's good. Where did you see it? In theaters? Yeah. Really? Yeah, a while ago. What the fuck? It was so good. I think I said that I saw it. We definitely talked about it. Or maybe I, I talked about it with Brandon. Zone out whenever you're talking. Yeah. <laughs> I must have talked about it with Brandon. Brandon's really been pissing me off lately. Let's hear it. Well, every time I text him, he takes fucking six hours to reply, and then he sends me a snarky-ass message back. Walker? Yeah. He might be snarked. Yeah. He He's all fully fucking big out. head because of that you? mostly sports show going on. Why are you, why are you texting him? Because he's one of my best friends. <laughs> you guys are an unlikely friendship. You guys got to start going to Blackhawks games together. Yeah, we talk about it a lot. Blackhawks. No, I texted please. him the other day and I said, "Do you think? Uh, do you think Michael Penix Jr. is better than Jaden Daniels?" And then he said, "Yes." And I said, "We'll see." And he said, "So then, why did you text me?" Just trying to chop it up, dude. My bad. Why the? <laughs> That that text is has a billion other questions that has me wanted to ask. <laughs> Why the fuck are you asking him that? Because he's a big college football guy. Do you want to know the answer, or are you just starting a conversation? No, I want to know the answer because I think I think Penix is better than Jaden Daniels. What is making you think that? I, well, I've been watching a lot of tape. Have you really? Yes. I mean, Penix throws one of the best deep balls. Oh, I mean, it's a beautiful ball. But the problem is, his up and down. He doesn't have that kind of up and down mid range. And he's a little bit older. Yeah, but and, he, I mean, and he has a little bit of a leg problem. But transfer the transfer market doesn't necessarily mean that a guy's bad though. No, like Joe Burrow transferred. And yeah, I think he's I think he's one of the top QBs in the draft class. But did he benefit from having a great wideout in Roma Dunze? I don't know. I don't know if it matters. <laughs> I, I just, just don't talking think a little ball. I just it, get... it's like when a fucking cunt at your dinner reservation starts speaking French to the waiter, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'm Bro. sitting here. Like, yeah. You're not yeah, up to date yeah. on the on the. Oh, what very good. <laughs> You're not up to date on the draft class. I'm dude. Saturday, I spent hours just watching tape of all the. I've top been grinding picks. so much. Tape. Yeah, all By the quarterbacks. Way, I'm that cunt at that re- reservation. Yeah, I, yeah, that's why I want to go to France with you, Francis. Yeah, just so I could hear you. Uh, Flex a little. Fully that cunt. And so by I, the way, <laughs> yesterday, we'll get back to ball. Don't worry. Yeah. I, can, right. I can go back to sitting out again. <laughs> I'm a little lightheaded because I just jizzed and had blood drawn. <laughs> jizzed and had blood drawn within five minutes what of each other. What the fuck? Yeah. I had to do, like, uh, you do the genetic testing as well. Uh, what is uh, what's genetic testing? It's to see if you have a, predisposition. Uh, a risk of certain things. Oh, really? I think the big one might be MS. What the fuck? What's the one that your body drowns in your own excess fluids or something like that? Pneumonia. That sounds like pneumonia. There's another one that's really bad. There's a few that are really bad, and then if you if whatever, I won't. Any I'll... of the S's: MS, ALS, SAS. Yeah, I have no idea. I don't know much, but I think MS is one that you can test for. Damn. Anyway, uh, where were we? Oh, yesterday I was parking my city bike at the dock right outside of our apartment building. Yes. And a woman to my right, I could hear her speaking French to her friend. And they were, and then she turned to me and she was, she goes, excuse me, uh, uh, but uh, can you help me with the uh, the bicycle? <laughs> and it's I was a good like, ass French accent. And I was like, yes. And I was biding my time to whip out my French. And she was like, well, there's I, what what is this phone number? I I cannot re- take the bike because it's but I have a daily pass. And uh, she was reading the one eight hundred number, and it was like one eight hundred bike help. Or right. something. She didn't know how and to. She ask. was like, "What is this?" And I was like, "Oh, you don't know that once upon a time there was letters, numbers, and letters y- y- on a phone meant something. There was a corresponding letter to each number on a phone." Right. Eight seven seven cash now. One eight hundred collect. Yeah, cars for call, kids. Call ATT. Uh, exactly. She didn't know that, and so I had to pull out my f- smartphone. And then, as I'm explaining it in English, I just flipped. To French, what is she? Was she delighted? She stayed in English and didn't comment on it, and it pissed me off. Because your French must have not been good enough. My French was so much better than her English. <laughs> so much better. She doesn't even know fucking 
predictive text or like any of these things, you know? I don't know how to do that. Do you know that once upon a time, would you know what letter uh, a, a D is on the phone? What number no. that is? I have a whole bit about it in my act and you've seen me do it a hundred times. I don't usually watch you. I'm usually drinking. Tuning out kind of thing, yeah. True. <laughs> I uh, know. I don't know how. I never. We. I never had to do that. We're talking to the host and being like, "I can't believe he's still doing this." <laughs> no, that bit is actually really good, and it kills. Oh, it does? Yeah, it's one of my best jokes. Really? Do it. Do it mm. for us. No, I can't. You can't. I'm usually, that's usually the part of the act where I'm telling the host, "Dude, can you go back out and do like four minutes of buffer, to bring the temperature back up, so that crowd I'm not work. stepping out onto a fucking." glacial stage <laughs> just maybe like have a people like like let's hear you on the left side let's hear you on the right side can you can yeah. you go back out and make sure that the people who have flocked to the bathroom during his set can can have time to come back it's to gonna be a lot of that this weekend resume their seats a In cab callaway like a hey, hey bakersfield i might have to have the host come out and do that in the middle of my set like break my setup into halves. You might need a hype man, <laughs> like fucking Flava Flav, to come out and be like, "Let me hear you in the back." They had to, they merged my shows. That's fine. Yeah, that's for the best. That's fine. You there was one of the shows had one ticket sold. They deleted a show of mine yeah. in uh, Houston. Just deleted it. Yeah, didn't even tell me. I'd rather Oof. them delete. Yeah, I thought they were going to delete the weekend, which I was not going to lie. I was kind of pumped about. You were. No. I'm going to Salt Lake City this weekend, and not many people are coming to that one. It's because yeah. the, the beers there are like... Uh, they're very low alcohol percentage. They're lighter. Even the but light beers altitude, are lighter. altitude, I think. No? I thought it was the Mormonism. Maybe the Salt Lake downtown area is not at altitude, but I certainly know that the ski resorts are very high up. There's a great hike right by the downtown of Salt Lake. Is there no? It's like a bluff that basically overlooks everything. Very, very nice... Uh, approachable hike where it's, hmm. it's not too far out of the way oh you're gonna be able to ski the whole weekend yeah, yeah. damn man it's dude the doing the road is so weird because it's just like some weekends are great and then it's just this weekend is gonna be i'm gonna be by myself tough in the middle of nowhere in california at least have you ever been beach? to bakersfield no uh, dude i posted it it's and nowhere the, by the beach right the, no the only replies i got were dude this is one of the worst cities in america Really? Every, people that live in Bakersfield be like, why are you coming here? It's so bad. Why don't they just come to the show and shut the fuck up? I don't know. It's probably not safe for them to leave their houses. <laughs> <laughs> They're just on... They gotta uh, go in between drone strikes. Yeah, what is it when like uh, like a military has like a city on lockdown? Martial law. Martial law, yeah. <laughs> Bakersfield's just under Bakersfield martial law been under law right large now. martial law for the last decade. <laughs> No one is talking about the genocide in Bakersfield, <laughs> California going on. Just barbed wire <laughs> fences up all the all over the place. <laughs> Spotlights at I, night. I get like places like that and where Nate Diaz is from confu Stockton. Stockton actually is like has like a top ten murder rate. Yeah. I and but isn't that up by Sacramento? Uh, I think it's like in between the Bay and Sacramento, maybe. I'm going to Sacramento in May, and that looks nice. That's up by that's like close to like Lake Tahoe. You got to go to the state capitol up there. It's beautiful. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go fly fishing out there when I go. Nice. Definitely gonna be dry season. Happy hatch. <laughs> Happy hatches, fellas. Let's choose Probably our own throw adventure some chubbies, right now. Some parachute atoms. Should we go? Should we talk about Francis giving blood and sperm, or should we talk? Go back to ball. Let's choose our own adventure. I think we need to finish the ball. Finish All ball I wanted to say talk about your ball about ball was that I was just I was looking into this. Because I was under the impression for the last couple months that Bears were going to take Caleb Williams. Which they are. Yes, Commanders were going to take Marvin Harrison Jr. They're definitely not. Nope, and the Patriots were going to take Jaden Daniels. But now it looks like the Commanders are going to take Jaden Daniels. So now I'm trying to convince myself that Penix Jr. is our best bet. Because I don't want the Patriots to draft Drake May at all. Why? I think he's awful. Because he's... White. Yes. It's well, interesting to hear you call them the commanders. The I, Redskins. I have not su succumbed <laughs> yeah. to the woke mob. Well, I, I, I just think that Drake May is is just going to be like Mac Jones or Zach Wilson. He's just a skinny white kid. He's not skinny. He's probably He probably fucking squats like 500 pounds. He's pretty big. He's pretty huge. Yeah, what do you mean, bro? Put respect on his th thick dump. He's actually a significantly bigger than uh, Penix Jr. Can you give me by your... By like three can inches. You can you rank your top five quarterbacks? This year's draft? This year's draft? Yeah. Caleb Williams, one. 
Penix Jr. two, Jaden Daniels three, Bo Nix four, Drake May five. Where's JJ McCarthy? Not even, not even in top fifteen. Really? Yeah, I think the high school quarterbacks are better than JJ <laughs> McCarthy. What? Dude, JJ McCarthy is so bad. Really? They yeah. just went undefeated and won a national championship. Yeah, because they had a good team. And the quarterback has nothing to do with that. Not, not, not that team. No. Well, I think that... I think I could have played quarterback on that team, and they would have won <laughs> as many games. The uh, at, at this point of the year, the draft minds get so hive minded, and the fact that you have you kind of broke from the norms with your ranking, I think, will serve you well in the long run. You could be wrong, but at least you're thinking for yourself. I don't know, just dude, Penix Jr. His 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 long ball, beautiful. Yeah. Drake May, have you ever watched him throw a deep ball? It's nasty. Shaking the whole just. What metrics do you look for when you're trying to scout a good quarterback? Just how comfortable ball? they are in the pocket, long ball, shallow ball. How quick they go through progressions. Yep, dodging tackles. Do they have happy feet? Are they calm in the pocket? Penix Jr. looks calm in the pocket, steady. steady. Caleb Williams, I mean, that's a trained professional right there. Stone Cold Killer. Oh yeah. He stays on one schedule. Of the, one of the two fifty, but he sure. can improvise too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, all right, that exhausts it. Yeah, that's pretty much all I had to say. From our balls to yours, Francis. We don't just have to go to me. I mean, it's fun for me to take hear it you. away. We, we literally had nothing else. <laughs> we <laughs> no, literally, I, I literally said it. even all the ter- words and terms that we knew. Yeah, I like this this coat. When'd you get that? Uh, last week. Nice. Yeah, he had to do something to show his New England fandom, but still cope with the fact that. He has uh, lost his his sweet, precious Mac Jones. All righty, everybody. Let's talk about the gentleman. They say a gentleman always keeps his word, but I can't repeat any of the words that the weed-dealing, gambling, murdering aristocrats aristocrats say in the gentleman. You couldn't even say aristocrats, much less any of the words that he (laughs) says. Exactly. It's tough words over the gentleman, but it's not a tough watch, I'll tell you that much. No, Easy on the eyes. Guy Ritchie's first TV show ever only on Netflix. Look, if you know anything about me, you know I'm a very big you're a Guy Ritchie, Ritchie fan. You're a guy guy. I'm a, like guy's, a guy. guy's guy. Exactly. Heck I yes. love Guy Ritchie. I love all of his work. That movie that he did with Gyllenhaal, phenomenal. Probably not as good as The Gentleman, though. Oh, no. no. The Dear gentleman. James puts Jake Gyllenhaal under the table it's based on his award-winning film the G- it's based on his award-winning film the gentleman series stars theo james and a whole new cast of criminal lords and ladies slumming it in britain's criminal underworld guns out and pinkies up <laughs> watch what Very happens nice. next when you try and play gangsters at their own game don't miss the gentleman now playing only on netflix Everybody's talking about how Bill Belichick was poorly portrayed in that documentary about oh, the Patriots, disgusting. but he didn't do himself any favors. He's an ordinary no. cheating bastard. He's an asshole. He's an asshole, and he cheats. He's the greatest coach of all time, and they made him out to be like, like what did they they did they did they want to win or not? Dude, That's him what I didn't not understand. him not commenting at all on why he benched Malcolm Butler. That was the only questionable thing. If Malcolm Butler didn't fucking bang Belichick's wife, right? Yeah, Belichick's and he was an probably like five minutes for late that. for a meeting or something. Yeah, you're sitting, son. Yeah, fucking loser. Well, yeah, that part was definitely questionable, but the rest of it, I mean, dude, they they would they would win. It would be like tensions were rising between Belichick and Brady, and then it'd be like, oh, but they won the Super Bowl again. And they'd be like, but Brady needed to get out. Someone had to go. And then they interview Brady, and they're like, you went over to Robert Kraft's house. What did uh, what did you guys talk about there? And then Brady's like, I think some of these things I, want, I would rather keep to myself and not really talk about them. They're private conversations. And then it cuts to Robert Kraft, and he's like, Tommy came over, and I mean, he broke down crying. He said, <laughs> Belichick is a demon. And it's like, dude, why? He bet Tom Brady just said he didn't want to talk about it. And then it was just clearly Robert Kraft paid for a documentary to be like, Robert Kraft is the greatest of all time. Belichick had nothing to do with it. I did think that the omission of the Robert Kraft rub and tug scandal oh, when yeah. every other piece of bad press that happened yes. around the Patriots was covered was Did they cover Hernandez? Yes. Yeah, big Hernandez. Time. They covered Hernandez, Spygate, Deflategate, but they didn't mention fucking 
Robert Kraft getting jerked off like the At day Orchids of, of the Asia. Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. Like out like an hour before the Super Bowl started, Robert Kraft was at a rub and tug. The most obvious rub and tug yeah. na- name place too. Yeah. And they Orchids. just skipped over was that. Was he a producer on it? Had to have been. No, come on. I don't Had know. to have been. Well. But then a bunch of a bunch of the people in that are coming out being like that they took a bunch of shit. Like one of the I forget who it was, someone came out and was like, I was I was interviewed for five hours but that's always what happens that's why you have to be very careful when you do a documentary they're gonna take the most benign and juicy thing that you say benign wow great word no but francis and i have a we have a quibble over the usage of benign i'd forgotten that we had that quibble <laughs> and now you're going to be brought back into it. Wait, I can't I, remember what it was that we you said. You just did it. You you uh, found my usage uh, to be a bit off. But I don't mind the time. What you just said, I thought it worked there just now. <laughs> wait, can we talk about your fucking? Let's uh, talk about it. I got my. Wait, I, I want to. I don't wait. I don't yeah, know if I don't we want to. Now let's choose your own adventure, you Francis. Just came. Huh? So I don't need you touching my legs after you just came within the last 30 minutes. I Do you want to talk about your cum? Let's choose your own adventure. You want to talk about your cum and blood taking or your your blog? You know, I don't know. Whenever um, you guys start talking about the blog, just give me like a two minute heads up so I can leave. Because <laughs> you don't read. I just don't know if I want to be in that. So let yeah. him know when it's an audio book. we need to, to, to cover the blog. No, we can talk about it. I just thought it was such a well-written, uh, fun-to-read blog. I You sent me your message, and I didn't know how you would feel, and I care deeply about your... I trust your opinion. I thought it was so fun to read. Ron's an evil person. Yeah, he loves that shit. <laughs> <laughs> He's incredibly wonderful himself, but when other people are casting shots and things, he gets giddy about it. Yeah. I mean, uh, I think to... You should have showed it to Gyllenhaal. To deny, to deny <laughs> that you get giddy about that is to deny the baseness of human nature. True. True. Like that is what like That's our chimpanzee like brain UFC enjoys fighting, yeah, like yeah. uh like drama and fighting and stuff like that. And to like pretend that you don't is like this unfair moral high ground that people <laughs> climb to that's like i'm above this like i don't like arguing or like uh they don't want to appeal to their like you know the the awkwardness i guess that you feel uh, in this situation because you think that chris castellani is going to school shoot us all or some shit whoa, like that whoa 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 i would never never said that never would say that i don't think he's going to sounds like you do i mean i took the elevator to the third floor today <laughs> I came all the way up. I just wanted to have as little exposure to the office as possible. <laughs> one show has, or one ticket has been sold in Salt Lake City. <laughs> <He's just laughs> in the- that would see. That's what Castellani should do. You should pull Don't a fifty cent this. on your ass. Don't put this evil Castellani out there. Castellani should pull a fifty cent jaw rule and buy all the tickets to your Salt Lake City shows, <laughs> <laughs> and then just be the only person in the crowd the whole the whole weekend. Hey, yeah. This fucking guy. That see that. That he legitimately should do that. That would be hilarious. That would be hilarious. Yeah. Yes, that would be funny. I might do that on his behalf, or just like just for that would be so funny. Yeah, great, great gag, man. Sass really got me. He bought all the tickets and sold out a show, and I only got seventy five percent of that door. <laughs> got just, your ass. You could have just Venmoed me. We could have canceled. Yeah, could have got the whole hundred percent. You know. Oh man! Thanks for the multiple thousands of dollars <laughs> <That'd be laughs> that I wasn't going to make, but for that. your whimsical sense of Castellani humor, Castellani could do that and then just expense the entire thing. Say it was for content. <laughs> they, yeah, that would be, basically it would be Dave doing that. But I just thought it was uh, like it, it, it had nothing to do with you. It had nothing to do with him. You just read some like a, a like. A, a bu- like a bunch of jokes in a row like that and it's just like funny and stimulating to read yeah i had a few good ones in there yeah it was definitely funny. it's like doing a battle rap it's like it doesn't matter who who the two people are you just want to see like a bunch of good lines in a row i liked uh like gyllenhaal does. i liked the line i had and this is me sucking my own dick of course it's barstool but i liked the line i had about he has enough skeletons in his closet to Oh yeah, that correct. Uh, satisfy the decorative needs of every Cinco de Mayo party from here until El Fan del Mundo. Yes, 
Which I didn't even get that part, but I still the end of the world. Spanish for the end of the world. Oh, but Cinco okay. de Mayo, is, there's like this parallel of language. It just shows how good of a writer you are. Yeah, but you would have done something better. You no, would have had. No, I wouldn't have. I'm I was, not that type of writer. I was trying to think if there was something with Dia de los Muertos that would have been a good time, but the distance between Cinco de Mayo and. Is, is Dia de los Muertos the same thing? Isn't it like the next day or something? But when is that? Oh, Diego knows. It is. It is. Diego's from Diego. Diego, aren't you from New Jersey? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Nuevo Duerce. <laughs> That's how they say it. It's uh, on the southern peninsula of <laughs> Guadalajara, Oaxaca. <laughs> predominantly but, uh, run by yeah, the that is good. Sinaloa cartel. Um, what was the movie uh, where they they uh, about uh, Dia de los Muertos? See, look at your accent is fucking erotic. Dea de los muertos. Dea de los muertos. What what was that movie uh, where they're all, it's basically about that. And they like go to the fucking, like the other side. It's like a Disney movie. It's like a Pixar ass movie. Oh yeah. Is it Coco? No, I don't think so. Moana? No. Oaxaca? I watched one of them. Well, actually I didn't watch it. I watched. Is it Coco? Coco. It's Coco? I didn't watch the movie. I watched the person on a plane next L- to me watch that movie. A little on the nose with Coco. No pun intended. <laughs> I know, but seriously? <laughs> yeah, it is always more fun to watch the person next to you. Oh, yeah. But I was trying to think of the movie title because I would I would have tried to play with, with that, but there's nothing really to play with there. Coco. Mm. With the, the, like the, yeah. Nothing there. Nothing. Jay Gyllenhaal. Coco. Jakey loves Coco. It's too easy. <laughs> I, f- I always find the way. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, oh, Two fifty yeah. of us. <laughs> yeah, C- C- Castellani wrote a blog. Resp- I was, I don't know. I was pissed off. Why? Because, um, not. I didn't mind the shot he took at me. That didn't mean anything. He made a joke that I looked like the Duke lacrosse team. What happened with the Duke lacrosse team? They were they accused, were raping? falsely accused of rape of two black strippers in Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina, and a crusading. Good nights. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're in your Mark Norman era right now. This word association. Um, can't even help himself. Yeah, keep going. That the <laughs> DA, say, the DA was in a re-election year, and he was like, "I'm taking this case. I'm going to make this a national story." And there was <laughs> all sort of evidence, apparently, that would have exonerated and ended the case. But they kept running it up, and everyone assumed that these boys were guilty, and they were not guilty at all. And they made a thirty for thirty about it. Oh shit. And the three boys, the three kids that were charged, I mean, they just picked them out of a lineup. And, like, one of them wasn't even fucking there. He was at, Jesus. like, an ATM across town. And there was, like, security cam footage of that. But the boys wind up coming up out on top. Those boys turned into the nut but boys. Dude, but, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Those kids are, I would say, maybe a third to a half of the public still thinks that those kids did totally. that. Totally. The apology my is parents, never as loud as the disrespect. My parents think that they did it. And I, I remember talking to my mom, and I was How like, How long ago what? did this happen? This was like 2007 Oh, yeah, 2006, Shit. it happened. Oh, I thought it was, was the biggest recently. thing. It was the biggest sports story until Sandusky. Damn. Um, and they were probably like, thank God those kids got raped. Yeah, <laughs> probably. I wonder... If they had that thought. Probably not that exact thought. Probably more like, oh, maybe there's there's another headline in the news now. Thank God. <laughs> what a fucking blessing. Thank you, Jesus. My prayers have been answered. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I so actually. He, so he Duke lacrosse you. Castellani. Yeah, he made that joke. And, and you, you know, were, it was like, annoyed. it was whatever. I mean, who cares? I, you know, that joke, I remember when I started doing open mics in 2011 in New York, I would go on. And you could set your fucking clock to the fact that the next comedian was going to come up and say, how about that Duke lacrosse player? Right. That just went. Yes. 
how about that guy? And it was a, it was a Duke lacrosse joke based on how I looked every time. You must look a lot like them. No, I think it's, it's just the archetype. white privilege. It's like white privilege douchebag. Yeah, they didn't. I didn't say anything about playing lacrosse. I didn't say anything about. They just say they're like, oh, you know, it's low hanging fruit. It's like, you know, and. It, you should have adopted a black scent to dodge the Duke lacrosse allegations. Yeah, yeah or like a <laughs> southern, like Creole kind of twangy. Yeah, you should have just started doing bits shitting on lacrosse. <laughs> or like talk like Jake Owen. Yeah. Or no, who's the dude, the white? Gary Owen. Yeah, Gary, Gary Owen. He should have just gone get full Gary Owen. Yeah. Y'all motherfuckers look like you play lacrosse. <laughs> white uh. boys love lacrosse. <laughs> the fuck is a lacrosse? <laughs> the polo company? <laughs> Uh, but so what pissed you off then you, it, no, yeah, that, that was just like an old joke no it was that uh that and i'm sure i'll you know cover this at length throughout the week but the dude is just like doesn't get why he's been benched mm. and everybody knows and he knows why but he refuses to face that and nobody wants to spank him and i had to spank him yeah, that's, I mean, I think... Because, because at some point, if we are all walking on eggshells around this guy uh, and no one wants to do the dirty work, I'll, you know, I'm not above it. Yeah, you're a great writer. And I like how it's Sass not, is like not, drawing it's... in the felt of the couch like his parents are explaining to him why he, they're getting divorced. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and people, people are like, it's punching down. Oh, okay. I mean, fine. I punch up, I punch down, I, I punch across. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't fucking, it's, I, I select things that I feel strongly about. And to me, he was holding the company hostage. How? By implying that, you know, if we came at him or called him out for anything, he would do something dramatic. Mm. And I don't think that that's fair. I don't think that that, that's, you know, if I had known years ago that holding a proverbial gun to my head translated to job success at this company i would have walked into dave <laughs> office be like just so you know this is there all the try, time try something dave yeah i don't take it down it's there just just know that and by the way how about a 25 percent risk yeah dead girls that her blood is on my hands my blood's about to be on your hands, yeah big boy yeah exactly <laughs> try something i dave. made that point i was like we're all fucking suicidal here you know and it, anyway, me. that was a funny part of the blog too. I mean, look, I, I, I uh, unfortunately, I can't even say that. Like, I, I, you know, I, I don't want anything bad to happen to Chris. Obviously, no. Obviously, one does. um, and I reached out to him after I wrote the blog. What did you say? What did he say? I said, "Hey, man, I just want you to know I wrote this blog, and uh, I'm sure you'll see it, and." Uh, feel free to, of course, come back at me. That's how it works. And no hard feelings, which is cunty of me. Because <laughs> what I wrote, I mean, you're not going to not have hard feelings from that. Um, but I just, I don't know. I wanted to <laughs> no reach out. No hard feelings, like no hard feelings from you. I like, won't... hey, I don't feel bad about what I <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> or like whatever. Hey, no hard feelings, whatever man. My feelings you... weren't hurt by what I said about you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah. You shouldn't have hard feelings for this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whatever you choose to write in response, I accept. It is what it is. I yes. put myself, I've, you know, but like, I don't know. You light a match, you're going to get smoke. He he put my name in his that blog. Ass. And whatever. Again, that's not, it. to me, that's like a green light, but it's not what gave me the gasoline i mean you made content out of this i think that if you had said that shit to him privately it would have been way a way different story that some would have people, been like nasty some people can't but i'm saying separate that that like uh, i don't know chris i don't know him uh i just know i've what i've read that he's written and i've seen a lot of his sort of vibe and tone and that he would complain about not being invited to the bracket busters in spite of his consistent Excuse me. Uh, I mean unwillingness to reckon with his own actions uh 
puts it makes the company look bad. There's a, there's an omission there. There's like, what? Wh- why aren't they? People start to think like, what? Why aren't they treating this guy fairly? It's like you fucking know, dude. You fucking know, and you sit on a house of cards, and why are you rocking it? Yeah, and you're pulling cards. Francis out here pulling cards. Sass, final thoughts? <laughs> oh, no, I'm not, none for me. <laughs> what is your issue here? No, I don't have any issues. <laughs> do you have a take? No, not at all. We don't have to talk about this. This is Barstool stuff. That's not really what we do on this pod. But No, this episode's going to be a heater. I'm not even kidding. Well, his story about Jake Gyllenhaal. No, oh, and I'm just thinking about the combination of the two. This might be our most viewed episode ever. No. Also, the Jake Joan Hall stuff is fake. <laughs> no. Of course. Bruh. Cut that. Of course. It's just a good story. <laughs> no. Yeah, we're cutting that for sure. What? Dude? Yeah. You can't cut that. We have to. That just actually ruined my day. <laughs> welcome, welcome to a fucking libel lawsuit. That's why I said it was fake. It's a joke on our joke podcast. We cut that. Huh? We cut you saying it's fake. So now you're holding a gun to my head? It's rare. <laughs> what the fuck is this? It's rare to see you squirm. You're I, squirming I, after that? <laughs> How am I squirming? I'm not squirming. Well, squirmy oh wormy over there. God. This is squirm? Oh, that made you squirm? This isn't squirming. Bro, you got to make sacrifices, even if they're legal sacrifices. I'm not squirming. For this, I know you wouldn't have cut it if it was on Pat Bev. That's for damn sure. I would have said it, it was fake. Been 17. They were, those clips would have been on ESPN. <laughs> <laughs> Host of the Pat Bev show with Roan does cocaine with Jake Gyllenhaal outside the lines. <laughs> Stephen A. Smith would have been commenting on it. It is preposterous that a man like yeah. this thinks he can undertake a nefarious deed. <laughs> um, yeah, I I don't know. I don't know why Sass is being a. Uh, 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 a little pussy about. I don't this. have anything to say. I don't have anything to add. I don't really involve myself in that kind of stuff. But to Chris, I don't have any advice to give. I mean, well, usually when I get gone at in the office, I just ignore it, or I don't ignore it. I read it multiple times, read every single comment involved in it, but I never reply publicly. And just feel really bad about and yourself. Feel really internally. bad about myself, and then I push it down, and then deep, deep. Inside. The only person that ever actually came after me though is Dave, the boss. Which has been like three times, but I just never reply. And I always sit there and I think of replies. And then I go, no, I'm not going to do that. Barstool Tate said that he was going to write a love letter to me and you. If if I hadn't, uh, like he he thought I I said Bartool Tate instead of Barstool State Tate. I just fumbled the words yeah. when I was saying it. But uh, I would have been interesting to see him trying to come at you. Yeah, I don't give a shit about that at all. <laughs> you had a 15 minute phone conversation with him yesterday. This is so funny. This is so funny. Oh, he called you after? He called me, and I didn't have his number. And then I went, I thought it was Castellani calling me because uh, I didn't have the number. So I went, over, I went over to like uh, Nate and that group, and I said, does anyone know is this whose number this is? And they put in their phone, and Nate had it, and he was like, it's Tate. So then I called him the back, boss. and then we talked about, potential collaborative he had a blog idea he wanted the fuck to is a collaborative blog you write a word i write a word yeah, he kind of said like paragraph for paragraph paragraph <laughs> swapping in tag team kind of thing and um i was like okay and then he fucking posted the screenshot of like <laughs> him receiving the call from me and then tweeted it and said uh just got off of a call with francis and he had asked me if he could do that. And I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. But I didn't know I didn't know he was going to make it look like I called him. <laughs> <laughs> and I only called him because he had called me. I was calling him back. <laughs> Francis can't stop calling me about this blog. I guess I'll take it. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, and then Kelly got mad at me. She's like, why are you calling Tate? <laughs> I was like, I didn't. I returned the call. That's hilarious. That's some like uh, Larry David. Oh my god, it was so funny. That's some curb shit. Um, what did he, was he calling you about the blog? Yeah, about the uh, he he wanted about the blog idea, the collaborative blog idea. Oh. Um, and then <laughs> Castellani wrote his rebuttal, 
which was the title of which was Francis is Right. And it was all this sort of sort of mopey, self-effacing. You said that you were fucking your stuff. dog until your, your wife the, got sick. In the middle of which he goes, <laughs> look, I could have taken a different route. I could have said, and then he was like that he blah, 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 that he fucks his dog and I hope his wife gets sick. With what? Like the flu? Just sick. I don't think it's a common cold. Like stuffy nose. When you wish <laughs> illness on someone's wife, I don't think it's like, I hope she gets the measles. I hope she gets nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, and diarrhea. <laughs> hey, fuck your wife. Uh, yeah, and I, I read that and I was like, oh my God, dude. You know, look, I, I'm not going to fucking, I'm not going to throw the shots that I threw and then take issue with that. But I, I was like, goodness me, you know? Yeah. Whoa. whoa. A little, a little whoa. But again, it, I think it's hip, hypocritical to pretend that there's any line, I guess. if you're... Right. He could go at you. Like, you know what I mean? All's fair when you're in you're, And that's what it comes down to. You're both making content out of it. If you were going at his person, calling his phone for 15 minutes and unloading this kind of thing, you'd be an asshole. But like we're in a business where you make content out of the things like this. Like, yeah, there is one other piece that that he did that was pretty nuts. Say it. He included in his first draft of the blog that uh, I he knew that I had harassed Bree's social girl. Who's that? Peyton. You harassed her? That's what he wrote. <laughs> Damn. He, he knew that you harassed and then, her. What the fuck? <laughs> Nate read it and was like, what does this mean? And I was like, hang on. And I went and talked to Peyton. And I was like, hey. This is really uncomfortable, but this is what he just said. I don't know if I've ever made you feel uncomfortable on a professional You said, did level. I harass you? No, I, I, I was very careful, you know, because no one has ever accused me of anything like that. I've never heard that. I've never really worried about that. Right. Um, and she was flabbergasted and then like angry that he would just make that up. And then she got another girl, Hannah, who's like the head of their team involved. And then both of them reached out to me and were like, we are going to go to war for you if this comes out. That's crazy. Wow. That's never in a million years have either of us ever said that, thought that. I feel like you do TikToks with them all the time. I love and those they're funny. They're hilarious. Yes. Um, and so then Nate pushed back on chris a bit and then chris took it out but it's like man you're fighting that's fighting dirty i think yeah just making shit up yeah that's tough using the word harassment <laughs> that's the h word h is i mean outside of f What's r f? n and these are the bad letters and h is like a, a tier right below them. what is f I mean, F could be like five different things. Am I crazy? That's crazy, right? <laughs> oh, shit. You you didn't have that? I've never heard that. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a new one? You mean like a bundle of sticks? <laughs> a cigarette <laughs> in England. <laughs> Interesting. 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 I wonder why he would say that. I think his back was to the wall. I think he was cornered. Yeah. Would be my guess. Yeah. I'm sure all of this is going to come out. I mean. Well, yeah. <laughs> no, but I, I think. Tomorrow at I 7 a.m. <laughs> I, I think it'll it be addressed. I want to I want to address these things in front of the principles. The, the Senate. Yeah. yeah. In front I want to the... talk to him. I want to talk about to all of this and, and with Dave and. Whitney and uh, Kirk. Will they have oh. you on? I'm sure. I mean... Sublime. I'll ask Dave at the Celtics tonight. I don't know. Are you going with him? Yeah. Me and Ron are going. Me and Shut Sass are going. Up. Feet on the hardwood. Best way to see the game. Sass <laughs> not got fucking weeds. 
<laughs> yeah. Cannot wait to be back on the paint. <laughs> yeah, the parquet. Where are, yeah. you, are you going to Knicks or, Cel- uh, or Nets? Celtics? Are you going to Boston? I'm flying yeah. to Boston. That's why I have to leave it. You're going with Dave At- courtside to Celtics? Celtics, uh, Bucks. That's sick. I know. It was a surprise. Too. Celtics are f- 600, 600, minus 600. Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Ten and a half point favorites. Well, Giannis what? is Giannis is out. Okay, fine. Giannis is out. Fair enough. Man. They would they would have been minus three hundred if Giannis Celtics was in. Celtics are having a big season. Incredible, Can't beautiful wait for season them to make it to the Eastern Conference Finals and lose to the. I mean, it would be great if you lost your to our coworker. If the Celtics lost to our coworker, who's our you're going to be fucking courtside. I don't get playoff tickets. Oh really? I go one game a year usually, and I didn't. Did get you it go this yet? Year. No. So you still have yours. I don't have it. Come tonight. I I, I have to wait. (laughs) I would go tonight. (laughs) Yeah? Yeah. (laughs) You like the Celtics? I'm I'm from Maine. Oh, yeah, but you don't like the Patriots. I have a weird mixed fan base or fan allegiance, but there are reasons for it. You like the Celtics? Not in Utah. (laughs) That's well done. (laughs) Just a little. Killer. Congrats, you're in the 250. <laughs> Welcome. You get tapped on the shoulder like it's the <laughs> Illuminati. Um, dude, I had a fucking dream the other night that uh, uh, we were doing the NFL draft show here, and I uh, and John Stewart was on the panel. Oh shit! And mm. I was interviewing John Stewart, and uh, he like during the interview, he was like being so nice to me, and he was like. You're so you're so good at this job. Like you're fucking crushing it. I can like, see that. I, I I need like uh, y- you get it at a level that these other guys don't. Basically, <laughs> and I woke up from the dream, and I I felt so good that John Stewart had said those things about me. And then I realized it was a dream, and then I realized John Stewart doesn't think those things about me. Yeah, that's what I think about myself. <laughs> 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 that's that's, that's my subconscious talking to me uh, and i got so sad and so fucking down on myself well, i've had that i've had that exact same dream but it was me and uh glenn howarden and he was like you're so he good was like i've funny. seen all of your shit you're hilarious <laughs> we gotta get you in the show yeah and then i woke up and i was pissed the most pissed i've ever been after a dream is when i was dating sydney sweeney and i yes. woke up and i was like you gotta be fucking shitting me <laughs> You put your feet down onto your sticky yeah. ass floor. I got a bed frame finally. Yeah. Yeah. I slept above the ground for the first time in a year last night. The rats must have been pissed. I know. They had to find a new home. What are we to eat? They're just <laughs> shivering. Yeah. Cool. This is better. Than us, Where are we gonna go? Where? Just, you wasn't that? It wasn't crumbs. even. It was the exact same amount of comfort. Yeah. I guess it was nice to not be on the ground. Yeah. Elevated living. But the situation. mattress was the same amount of comfort. I think I got a mattress, right? Yeah. Right? I thought those yeah. the bed I thought the bed frame would support would give a little bit more cushion, perhaps, rather than the floor. Uh, I don't know. And I've been waking up and my shoulder hurts. That's I'm age, brother. On my side. That's you just you're just getting older. You gotta start stretching. Nah, you're not gonna do that. Nah. But it is wild that just your dreams are uh your body like in mind affirming yourself. Yeah, what'd you take before your dream? Not a that damn sounds thing. like a drug induced. No, like just being melatonin. off the weed. No melatonin. I just, have been, I just have been on that shit. No Kush. Not even a little bit. God no. I I drank a CBD drink. Not even no THC. Made sure that there was no Last THC night? in it. No, like uh three nights ago. Yeah. And it had it had me uh it had me like feeling paranoid. I thought CBD was supposed to calm you down. It had me like jittery, yeah. like I was like too high. Yeah. I know I'm going to come back to weed and I'm going to be a pussy. <laughs> I know yeah. that that shit is going to whip my ass. When, when I are finally... you going back? I don't know. At the latest uh, Memorial Day. Mm. Maybe before then, but Memorial Day. How come you get to quit weed and no one cares? But when I said I was quitting drinking, it was like a fucking, no, you're not. You're not allowed to. <laughs> Because I always said I was coming back, and you were like, I'm fucking done for good. Interesting. I could come back at any time. Yeah? What about right now? Where's the kush? I'll get some right now. I got to go take a flight, actually. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <There> we <laughs> Last go. thing I want to do is be paranoid on the way to the airport, thinking I'll be late, and then as the plane takes off, palm sweaty, arms heavy, mom Those spaghetti. Heavy. Mm-hmm. Fucking thinking the plane's going to crash. Well, that flight is 30 minutes long, so I think you'd be good. I don't even know if it goes all the way up. 
<laughs> yeah, they don't de- depressurize the cabin. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah, you're fine. You had to get there. You gotta, no, you got to go in like five minutes or so. Yeah, I got the Uber. Pull really, what time quick? is your flight? This this sperm blood thing. Yes, I need to hear about it. Take your time because um, I have no. I'm on no rush. I'll miss this flight. I don't so, care about there's the game. so many things that I just like hysterical that I want to work my way through, but. Yeah, t- tell tell the whole thing. You go in and this best episode of all time, maybe the banger. So stay, let, let give the people a, a treat. Well, you they know you you know every man is in there. I think most of the men that are in there are there for the same reason. It's to have a semen analysis, and so there's like five dudes sitting by themselves. What's and their energy? It's Hard. a little bit like we're all waiting to go do something shameful. Well, that's because it is. Even though it's for medical purposes, uh, every guy in there, y- you can almost see them flicking through the porn scene they want to download on their phone <laughs> in their head. And that's what we're all about to do. We're five minutes away from jerking off, and it's known. <laughs> There's a, 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 a an air, a fog of anticipatory masturbation. <laughs> <laughs> linking us all and i thought it would be funny because they had this bench seating along the window and guys were as spread out as possible it was as oh, if it yeah. was like an airport urinal thing and i thought it would be funny to get Just... really cozy with some of them be like, <laughs> did you you got a do you have any idea what the record is here? <laughs> <laughs> which way now fast or slow yeah, the other part of it was i had i had driven which is why it took me so fucking long to get here and because it was all the way up in the Upper East Side. And so I parked in a parking garage. And in New York City, they do those half hour specials. If you're in and out in half an hour, it's, you know, $18. Anything over half an hour goes all the way to 55 bucks. Jesus. From fucking 31 minutes to 24 hours. It's the same price. They must know they're next to the jerk off station. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. And so I am watching and I'm like waiting for them to call my name. And I'm like, this is going to have to be a quick one. I'm going to have to really get get this get in and out in order to pay less for parking so i'm on the clock here uh and so they give they bring you into your room and it's weird it's weird are there magazines they're dvds (laughs) they fucking dvds and then headphones and i was like get the fuck out of here the headphones that someone's tummy hands take off of their head headphones Big over ear headphones. Did you take any photos? No. No. There's a chair. There's a chair that looks like almost like a barber chair. I think it reclines a little. I didn't touch it. And then they've put the sterilized paper on just the seat, but not the back. Ooh, the back is where you really. <laughs> and want I'm, it. I'm like, I'm, I'm. We're gonna be standing for this. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, we're we're gonna. What about the guys that need to lie down? <laughs> What are they to do? It was too small to lie down. What? It was way too small of a room to lie down. What in. kind of phone, phone booth are you in? And there's a woman who's standing in the doorway giving you instructions. And how she's hot, like, how all right, here's she? your sample. Not not at all. Damn. Four. Did she stay in the doorway the whole time? Pff, I wish. She's going to hate to hear this. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't. I Her and Jill and Hall are going to be steaming at this episode. <laughs> yeah. So they, she's giving you all these instructions, like you need to, uh, if you if you don't collect all of the sample and some of it goes missing, you need to mark missing. this box. I'm like, I'm not a magician. <laughs> one sperm wasn't labeled one, one was labeled three, and they couldn't find two. Is it heading for the East River? Like, <laughs> yeah. what, what the fuck are we talking about? Um, and and then it's like, mark your number of days of abstinence, uh and then all these things, and then like right on the cup itself, the time you have to mark the time that you actually hit hit you know not Eject. To, not to bottom of the cup. So I get in there, and I'm like, I'm not doing the DVDs. Although there was a part of me that was like, Should I? This is old school. There's a culture here. But then they'll like see what the minute marker on the DVD is that you came. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I stand in the footsteps of giants. Like I should, as many have come before me, quite literally, I should Damn. I should do the DVD. This uh there's a sanctity to this. There's like a I don't know, a custom. <laughs> but then they find out that you started coming before like during the plot line of the <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> before anyone was even nude. <laughs> 
Especially DVD porn. Yeah. So then I just pulled up my phone. Heavy plot. <laughs> yeah. And I started thinking about like, what, what, you know, how dark are we going with this scene? And I just went to an old basic favorite. Oh, bro, you should have gone as dark as possible so you could give your best, best coming. I worried best about load. that. I worried about that. But I, I also, I'm wearing boots, and given the timing of the parking, I didn't want to unlace my boots and then take my very stiff work-like trousers off. I've gotten into this workwear, American workwear thing, and I keep buying pants that one would buy if you worked on a railroad or shingling roofs. Right, but it Chimney takes forever sweep. to break in, and I don't know why I do that, but that's my look right now. It's a and good look. I'll tell you, man, it is tough. To jerk off in these pants. So you just had them at your ankles like a no, toddler using a urinal? I, I had I had them up. All the way up? I did take my shirt off. That's crazy. <laughs> That's insane. Everything is Why? funny about this. Why? It would be this. drooping down. I had, to, I had to get it all in the cup. Just in case the nurse came in. Yeah. Were you <laughs> flexing? Were you, you looking in the mirror? You locked the door and then you pressed You were it. definitely just looking in the mirror the there whole time. There was no mirror. <laughs> like American Psycho? There was not oh. a mirror. <laughs> You wish. And by the way, you're thinking a little too hard about this there, amigo. Why don't you keep painting your own pictures? It's just so fucking weird. <laughs> I agree. It's well, how hilarious. do you jerk off, Sass? It is weird. This is not how I Fully jerk off. Fully clothed. I jerk off pretty much with like snow pants and a jacket on. You fish it out of your fly yeah. and keep the button done? You just hear the yeah. rustling of the snow pants? <laughs> <laughs> did, did, did anyone, could you hear anyone like yelling? Sass is one of the minefield of razor burn that yeah. <laughs> surrounds and mumps and lumps that he's got. Yeah. You got you should have You should have let out some loud ass moans. I th well, so this was the tricky part. Dude, there were people walking by right outside the door yeah male nurses and i was like i've never doctors you mean i think it was nurses <laughs> really people who were collect you know coming in to just take the paperwork from me so then so then they uh you finished i was just making a joke about the viability of a male being a nurse <laughs> they would just be a doctor right totally surgeon at least that you, Surgeons, you'd, you'd yeah. have to assume. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you put it in the cup, you do it up, you write your time, and then she comes, you ring a doorbell. They come, they put gloves on, they take it from you, and then... Imagine the smell of those rooms that these women are walking into. <laughs> like the fucking cherry blossoms are blooming. <laughs> I mean, I left my room cleaner than it was. I took the camping mindset to that. Right. You you don't want to leave a scrap behind. Yeah. But I mean the smell though, you can't clean up the smell. No, but I What is come have a quite a pungent smell? No. I mean there's trees that they call cum trees. It's like a weird thing that people talk about that I've never understood. I think 10% it's like asparagus. Only 10% of the population can't smell the cum smell. You're probably in the 10%. <laughs> I must be. You'd be terrible at a SVU. <laughs> but then, then I went and got, and I got blood drawn three minutes later, and the woman sets me down. <clears throat> What's the word for a woman who does takes blood? A a vampire word. nurse. Anyway, she goes, "Which arm?" And I was like, "Well, I use my right." <laughs> and she didn't laugh, and uh, did my left. And that was my joke that I thought really was going to land. Um, it is funny, but she didn't did like not. it? She didn't like it. Someone told me she'd heard it before. Yeah. <laughs> she was not moved to giggles. I mean, women like that have to just be able to, in a profession like that, in a field like that, you should be trying to alleviate any of their pressure at any time. You shouldn't be making it more shameful for the boys coming out fucking yeah. freshly combed. Dude, bro, then as she, she puts the needle in, I hate giving blood and or having blood taken. And uh, she's telling me about the billing process. She's like, make sure you submit your insurance card when you go back up front because uh, the STD scan that we do, which is standard, is covered. But if you're doing genetic testing, sometimes that's out of network and... And that can be two hundred and fifty dollars, and I'm not sure. I'm like, don't you're not helping with my anxiety of the fact that blood is coming out of my arm right now. 
Yeah, that I mean, he- hearing about billing information as you're fucking about to pass out. Yeah, I guess I would rather that time. than the fucking what the dude was saying to me. Oh yeah, well, it's not. I wasn't competing with you. <laughs> no, I'm not. I didn't think you were. The but guy you... when I got my blood drawn, the guy was like, "You're you're not gonna freak out, are you?" And I was like, "No." He's like, "The last person here freaked out, passed out." <laughs> Is that a freak out even? I feel like that's involuntary. He was like, they said they weren't going to freak out, and then they freaked out. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I don't know what you're, what are you, are you trying to make me freak out? I said I wasn't going to freak out. And then I was like, you- are you sure? You sure about that? Because the last person said they weren't going to freak out, and they did. Well, then what, what, if you said you were going to freak out, what the fuck would they do different? I don't know what the point of the question was. They're trying to freak you out. Yeah, exactly. They're trying to pass you out. Yeah. Hmm. They were trying to pass you out too, Francis, by that billing information. Or maybe they're just trying to distract you. By the way, this is going to cost $10,000. You need to go. Yeah, you do need to go. To get my sperm checked? No, to leave. (laughs) You got to go, dude. Isn't your flight in an hour and a half? It is. They had a piano in the waiting room. I thought about playing it. That would be hilarious. And singing some (laughs) song about like... Take it easy, boys. <laughs> Don't use the DVD player. You should have just gone up and sang Piano Man. <laughs> Get a sing-along yeah. going. That's a funny scene. Man, what are you doing here? <laughs> All right, I'm smashing the Uber. All right, good luck. Um, I guess we can end the episode, right? It feels like... This, I don't know how long you guys went before I got here, but... It feels like we've been gone for a while. Well done. All right. Uh, All right. Thank you guys all for listening. Um, I'll be in Salt Lake this weekend. Tickets at FrancisEllis.com. Come to Wise Guys Jordan Landing. Let's have a non alcoholic yeah. beer. I will be in Irvine, California on Thursday for one show and then two shows in Bakersfield on Friday and Saturday. Goodbye. Oh, tickets at LilSasquatchWebsite.com. Website.com.